307, properties of the equilibrium constant. So there are four rules that we're going to go through. One, when a reaction is reversed, K is inverted. Two, if the stoichiometric coefficients of a reaction are multiplied by a factor C, K is raised to the power of C. I just saw I've got a missing I there. When reactions are added together, the K of the resulting overall reaction is the product of the Ks for the reactions that were summed. And then all of the above rules also apply to Q. So we're going to go through these rules one at a time and you can see uh, basically where they came from. When a reaction is reversed, K is inverted to one over K. So consider the following reactions. We have the forward reaction, and then we're just gonna flip it around and we've got the reverse reaction. And we're going to write equilibrium expressions for all, uh, all of them, just for practice. So K forward, you should be writing HCO2 minus H3O plus, we're going to cross out the H2O because it's a liquid. So in our denominator, we have HCO2H. Now let's write K for the reverse reaction. Again, we're going to cross out water and we have HCO2H divided by the product of HCO2 minus and the hydronium ion H3O plus. Oh, look, it's just the flipped uh, fraction. So K reverse is one over K forward. Let's take a look at the next rule. When the stoichiometric coefficients of a reaction are multiplied by a factor C, K is raised to the power of C. All right, that's a mouthful, but it's actually very straightforward. We're going to write the equilibrium expressions. So let's go ahead and write them underneath here. We have CO and that's over O2 to the one half and we omit the carbon because it's solid. And then our next one, we have CO squared and this is over O2. And then our third one is CO cubed over O2 raised to the three halves. So if K1 equals 2.0 times 10 to the fourth, then we should be able to figure out what K2 or K3 are because notice all we've done is we've gone from one squared cubed, okay? So implied one, two, three. So uh, then K2, so let's just plug this in. So K1 is 2.0 times 10 to the fourth. So K2 must be 2.0 times 10 to the fourth squared. So K3 must be 2.0 times 10 to the fourth cubed. Now they love to put these questions on the multiple choice section so you should be able to handle this type of math. So k2 is going to be equal to 4 or 2 squared which is 4 times 10 to the 8th. So 2 times 4 gives you the new exponent. So 4.0 times 10 to the 8th. 2 cubed is 8 times 10 to the 12th. So 8.0 times 10 to the 12th. So you take your original, you raise it to the power of the coefficient and that is your new K. Last rule, when reactions are added together, the K of the resulting overall reaction is the product of the Ks for the reactions that were summed. Again, this sounds like a mouthful. What it really means is that K net is going to be equal to K1 times K2 times K3, with the Ks being the uh, equilibriums for the individual steps. So let's take a look at this multi-step reaction here. We've got uh, NOBR decomposing to NO and bromine. 
So we're going to do the net reaction. First, let's make sure that, is there anything that crosses yet? Yes, the bromines will cross out. Remember from kinetics that these are intermediates. We know it's an intermediate because it was produced and then consumed. So our net reaction is 2NOBr plus chlorine gas produces two moles of nitrogen dioxide plus two moles of bromine monochloride. We are given the K values. So the first thing we're going to do is write the Kp expression for step one. So that is going to be partial pressure of NO2. Remember, it's asking for Kp, so we better use the partial pressure symbolism. And that is partial pressure of bromine gas. And we're going to divide that by the partial pressure squared of NOBr. Now we're going to do the same thing for step two. So we have the partial pressure of bromine monochloride squared over the partial pressure of bromine times the partial pressure of chlorine. Now, if we were to put these two together, we would find that they would give us Kp for the net reaction. We're going to just go to the net reaction here. We're going to write Kp based on that reaction at the top. So we have PnO2 squared times the partial pressure of bromine monochloride squared over the partial pressure of NOBr squared times the partial pressure of chlorine gas. So this is actually these two multiplied together with the bromines canceling out. So in summary, rule three, if you multiply Ks, uh, multiply Ks if you add balanced equations. So K net is K1 times K2 times K3 if you had a three-step reaction. All right, we're going to apply these rules. I'm going to do the first set of practice problems. You are going to do the second set. So consider the following reaction. A plus 2B makes C plus 3D, and we're told we have K of 3.0. Useful thing to know. What is the equilibrium constant for 3A plus 6B in equilibrium with 3C plus 9D? Well, everything's written in the same order, but we've multiplied everything times 3. So we're going to use the, the rule that K nu equals K old raised to whatever the power is. So this is going to be 3 raised to the third, which is 27. Now we have to find the equilibrium constant for C plus 3D in equilibrium with A plus 2B. So this looks like all we've done is reverse it. So we're going to write an R there. So we know that K nu has got to be equal to the inverse of K old. And so we have 1 over 3.0, which is 0.33. So again, these are very common on the multiple choice section of the test. OK, you're going to try number two. So I want you to give that a shot. Pause. Okay, let's see if you got to the right answer. So the first one here that I'm just circling, this was 
everything was divided by one half. So instead of two moles of SO2, we had one mole of SO2. So this means we're going to raise K to the one half power. Remember that means you're actually taking the square root. So we take the square root of 278 and we get 16.7. In the next one that you're supposed to figure out the value of K for, we've reversed the reaction, so K nu is 1 over k old, so 1 over 278 is 3.60 times 10 to the negative third. The other way that you will see these problems on the AP exam is they'll give you a set of um, equations. So we have this set of reactions, HF aqueous dissociates to form H plus and F minus. And then we have oxalic acid, that's the H2C2O4, dissociates to form 2H plus and C2O4 2 minus, and we're given two equilibrium constants. We're asked to determine the value of the equilibrium constant for the reaction here. We're going to treat these like Hess's law. So we figure out how to manipulate the above equations to sum up to the final equation. So we know we need to have HF on the reactant side and we need to have two moles of HF. So we go, oh, okay. Let me multiply this one times two, and I'm running in the forward direction. So that means that I'm going to use K1 squared. Now I need to produce H2C2O4, which means I need to reverse the second reaction, and I don't need to multiply it by any coefficients, so it's reverse times one. So I go, okay, that means I'm gonna use one over K2. So my K net is going to be equal to K1 squared times one over K2, or K1 squared over K2. I'm just putting everything together. So what this means is I have, I'm gonna do this underneath, 6.8, times 10 to the negative fourth squared over 3.8 times 10 to the negative sixth. And I only have two sig figs, so this would be 0.12. This is more likely to be found on the free response section where you would have to realize that you, again, need to go back manipulate the equations so that they add up to your net equations. Okay, so we are done with manipulating K, which means we can go off to bigger and better things.